I guess it's something you're you're quite used to at this point. But the like, I guess what's your your feeling when you're playing with someone in a going from purely electronic? Although in this case, I guess you have some samples and stuff, but sort of working largely purely electronically with someone working purely acoustically. Like, how do you feel in terms of the instrument and immediacy? I guess from from your end. Um, I, I suppose I always feel that the 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 immediacy, well, playing with somebody with an acoustic instrument like highlights the, the lack of immediacy sometimes of, of what I'm using. And uh, it, it almost sort of like makes me uh, feel slightly inferior in a way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, not in, in a kind of motivational way, not necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in something that's like, you know, I'll, I'll dwell on or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, because the, especially with the, the setup that I'm using, uh, it's it's there's, there's there's an additional level of sort of non immediate abstraction in between uh, me uh, the, uh, and the output basically because the the mixer itself can be quite an immediate instrument as as you probably aware but with the um, sample stuff the concat stuff mm. there's, there's, there's a sort of extra partially uh, un unknown. Um, response there sort of thing so so the articles articles are somewhat sort of muddied sometimes in, yeah, in, yeah. in what you what you'll get out of them i suppose so uh i suppose yeah it does um does you, you, you know while well, i'm using this i was thinking i, I wish <laughs> I, I, I wish it could be as immediate as, as yeah. you were. So, it's, so it's kind of sometimes feels like you you might want to respond to uh things that the other personal people are doing um at a, a, a quicker rate than you can with yeah, yeah. So, so. I mean with because I know you've spent a lot of time like performing with the mixer and like the no input stuff and mm. you're you're quite as far as like the world of that goes I, I feel that you're on, very on the fast end of that you know you can respond very quickly and it's very gestural the way in which you use the the, mm. the mixer but I think that's something that like I guess you spent a good amount of time developing and honing that um, that practice you know to get that to a, a place where it's not just like <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah. I suppose the 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 known mix is generally sort of known as an instrument that is quite almost static in its, mm. its response. Like a lot of people use it because of its unpredictability. A lot of people seem to, from from what I've experienced, um, or traditionally sort of in the use of it, use of it, yeah, seem, seem to sort of opt for the, the safer yeah. sort of end of gestures like the oops, tones and. Um, Things like that, basically. The historical yeah. no input mis mixer I, I, practice, yeah. Absolutely, the, the, yeah. Old, the old testament. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, one of the things that drew me to it as, as a, a, an appropriated instrument is the the, the fact of its uh, responsiveness. And it, it's kind of, it's almost hyper-responsive in a way. Um, the, you know, the, the, the um, gestures that you make with it, which are, which are kind of things that you might be used to if you're using a mixer, uh, uh, Accentuated, almost sort of caricatured in in the way that the um, you, you use it to generate sound. So it's, it's kind of like you know the the smallest turn of turn of a knob can make a, a very large difference. So it's, mm. it's, it's kind of um, uh, yeah, it's 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 almost uh, hyper responsive in in that way. Yeah, so. it's like kind of like a super random tangent. I was just half thinking because <laughs> the I don't know if you how up on gear stuff you are, but like Teenage Instruments has just come out with this like little tiny mixer. I think I've come across like yeah, yeah, yeah they, it, they, they didn't have something that was like a it was it's was, it was kind of a workstation, but it was like a tiny keyboard sort of work. Well, they have that, but that, that's and a few years ago. But that, like well, literally, like a couple of days ago, it's yeah, it's yeah, a twelve yeah. channel mixer that's it's like yeah. literally like this big. Yeah. So I was just picturing like you trying to do some of these gestures <laughs> with like you know like the, yeah. the literal like literally like a, a mixer that big like it would be. Uh, I suppose if it's, if it's digitized as well, you know, yeah, that'd, that'd be, that'd be um, <laughs> even harder. Um, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, they they also I think they were behind the have you come across a play play date as well. That's something mm. that's it, it's by the same people that do teenage engineering, but it's okay. actually d under that same brand. Okay. But it's it's kind of like a uh, some kind of game device or something. Oh, I, like I think I've seen I've seen that. Yeah, it's I like don't a, know if it's a, a Game, game Boy esque kind of, inspired yeah, thing. I think it's 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 like a very hackable sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they're, hmm. they're kind of pushing the, the, the musical end of that as well. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah. But I, I did see that mixer. Is, is it strictly just a, a, a mixer? Or I mean, it, it does also have, I think, some synths and some drum machines in it or whatever, okay. but like... So it will be a digital mixer, presumably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
I think it also works at the sound card, but it's, it's like, yeah, it's like yeah. a little bigger than a business card or whatever. It's yeah. quite, quite comical. Um, yeah. So with, in terms of like what you're doing with the, the sort of the computer there, was the desire to do that? I guess maybe it's, it's a broader question, but like in this setup, not necessarily today, but like mm-hmm. incorporating kind of the stuff with the mixer, is it just to use the sort of like your muscle memory and playability from the mixer, but with like a broader timbral palette or is it just like a, an exploration of the sounds and this is just a handy way that you had to get at that like what's the why these two things uh, together? I, I suppose it's probably more the the latter of those two okay. actually because um the, the 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 way in which the the, the way in which they work, work together it kind of implies that um a, a different approach to to playing with the mixer is, is required to get the the, mm. the uh, I'd say the what I desire for yeah. the synthesis, as opposed to uh, what would be uh, what I desire from the mixer alone. So it's it's, it's quite a different um, gestural approach that I take, and one that I'm I'm still kind of learning really mm. in in the respect that this computer stuff is still under development, mm. and that's. Um, uh, I, I suppose it's, it's actually been quite heavily influenced by um, some some of the things that you've uh, directed me right. towards and, and, and various various bits of things that you've done because I know you've got a, mm. a, quite a, a, a historical basis yeah. of uh, <laughs> concatenative yeah, yeah. copper's based uh, stuff. So mm. that's that's informed uh, uh, the, the development of the stuff and, and exactly what would be the, the, the inputs and the stimulus for, for the systems that I've been working on that hasn't really been... Um, distinct at the point of making them i suppose so, mm. so the mix is kind of an obvious um uh, uh, initial thing to 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 uh, work with because that's that's what i'm most used to in terms of a uh, um playing as a as a uh, gestural instrument really uh, mm. but it, it does it does demand a very different sort of uh, uh playing as a puzzle well that's with like i said with with the to, to produce the results that I desire. I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah. I could just play the mix as I'd been used to playing it, but uh, uh, and there'd be some sort of output. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's. I mean, I also be accessing the whole of the corpus. Yeah, know, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, do you, do you ever have any sort of sim sim yeah, yeah. parallels with that? I mean, does, I, do you think that the the because it's it's kind of interesting that the 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 way that there's a kind of almost a feedback yeah, yeah. loop in in the fact that what the output of the Concentrative reasons this might provoke in yourself yeah, actually yeah. informs your playing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, on a fundamental level, like a lot of the instruments I play have a, a like a quite narrow timbral input anyway. So there's already mm. a like a mismatch there. So I often yeah, do stuff yeah. where like you're probably doing something similar where you like you'll scale the yeah, the descriptor yeah. space to kind of best fit it. Yeah. But even then, I, at some point, I kind of committed to the idea of like. Like, if I'm going to sit down at the piano, there's 88 notes there. I'm not going to play all 88 in any given performance. I mean, you might, but, like, it's, it's mm. a, like looking at an instrument as the totality of every sound it can make is, I think, I, I've found, I've arrived at a place that that's often unhelpful. You know, like, like mm. I can sit down and, like, I can make a, I can sit here and, and play in a way that I'm going to do every type of sound I can possibly do with this, but that's probably not yeah, musically yeah. appropriate. You know what I mean? So, like, mm. sort of embracing the the real limited thing. Like similar to kind of what you you were doing there, like I've been doing a lot of stuff lately where I have like very small corpora. So like okay. I'll have like a like a, a thing where I'll have like a symbol and I'll do like 20, 30 samples with it. And right. then like okay. just that. And then I feed recordings yeah, yeah, yeah. of the symbol into it. And it's like this super like almost uncanny valley, like like right. reduced space, which is yeah, makes okay. a, a kind of a funky way to play. It, it, that's a, a kind of a specific idea. Yeah. But, no, that's, that's very similar to what I'm doing there. Obviously, you've probably noticed I've got like very specific groups of one mm. of them was a there was a selection of hi hat samples. And yeah, like yeah. F- five hundred of different sort of combinations there. So, mm. but we were saying you're actually using with the, with the symbol, you're actually using the, the symbol as input for. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, Which I was going to ask if you've run the, 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 the mixer into a purpose <laughs> mixer, but uh, I haven't actually yet. No, no. But, but some, something that is noticeable that, that's kind of like it's slightly tangential, but it's it's still in in the sort of remit of what we're talking about i think is that one of the things that i've got on on this which i didn't use so much then but it's actually uh s- some sort of post resynthesis effects that can be applied right but then those can be fed back into the to the like the recent, recent, recent yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a feedback with there yeah i mean yeah. like i remember playing with pa at some point where he would do 
like overdumbing or looping, but pre-analysis. Okay. So like you would have like the whatever layers you would add to your looping or whatever would then still also go into the resynthesis. So instead of like right. looping the resynthesized output, you would loop pre the, the input. Yeah, and, and then you would get like different behaviors coming out. Mm. But yeah, I, I mean, in the last like year or so, I've really gotten into the idea of having like small corpora and then often yeah. feeding the mm. same or very similar sounds into it. And yeah. just because it becomes like a, a very uh, almost surreal thing, like for one watching it, but also listening to it, where it's like, I'm also unsure which whether I'm making that sound or it's the recorded yeah. version. And yeah. it becomes like blurry in a way that I kind of find in like a mediatization yeah. way interesting. I think it is probably like synonymous with... Um... So, so like the, the the way that you're approaching playing the, the snare now you've kind of you know you've got a fairly limited yeah, yeah. Uh, person but you, you've uh due to that you, you you the potentials are kind of wider in a way yeah, because, yeah, exactly. because of, you know your limits so if you so i suppose if you've got a huge cup or a, 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 um it can be kind of over facing sometimes or and, and you can sort of end up in territory where you, you don't really know yeah yeah or or it becomes you, it, it becomes or, and it can be cool as well, where it's, you almost have like this sort of like infinitely variable accompaniment, which mm -hmm. is like like when you have a lot of corpora and they're really varied, like you have like yeah. it's doing stuff and it's cool. And, and, and I like that as well. But yeah, l lately I've gotten into like, I mean, even with a lot of the setup, what I do with like drums or snare, like it yeah. tends to be quite limited in, in, in mm -hmm. palette and, uh, and, and sort of just kind of embracing that. And just like if we think like yeah. any instrument, like a, a violin or whatever, like the, the timbre range, like it's like pretty narrow all things considered i mean you can play a lot of notes and all this mm -hmm. other stuff but like the sounds that it can make is actually quite small so just kind of leaning into some of that um do you, do you find that you you have to sort of narrow um uh scale the scale the descriptors with a with a sort of narrowed set like that, or is well, it, it depends. Is it so like when i'm feeding itself into itself i usually don't right. although you do get interesting results if you do because yeah. then it like really exaggerates mm like the slightest touch and then it, that becomes really loud because of how things are scaled. But usually when I'm doing like the same input to output, uh, I, I don't do anything. But typically I'll do some kind of scaling or normalization to kind of make the ends fit a bit more. Just because like, like here, like all of this is sort of relatively mids and highs. And if I have anything low in the corpus, it, it will just never, ever, ever yeah, activate. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, are you still using the same descriptions as you have? Because yeah, I've, before, I've, I remember saying you had like four. Main yeah, a, a lot of for a lot of it, it's, it's just been like loudness, uh, centroid, uh, flatness, and is it roughness or something? Is it spectral, yeah, spectral roughness or something. Oh yeah, pitch. No, no, so yeah, spectral flatness was the one I was using for timbre. Okay. Um, with some of the newer stuff with Vacoma, I've been I've been doing a bit more yeah. and using a bit more statistics as well with it, like derivatives right. and. And other other like um, statistical um, reductions, mm -hmm. but I'm still I still haven't arrived at a, a sort of a recipe or something that I like there because yeah. it's 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 hard to mix with a lot of like big data stuff. The numbers don't matter anymore. You just shove stuff in. You have no they have no meaning anymore. And but yeah. the, the algorithm will correlate them. Whereas I still kind of feel old school in that like one of these is loudness. And yeah, I suppose if you if you're sort of plotting those as well, if you've got yeah, some sort yeah. of something, because I, I remember some time ago you, you uh, kind of strongly advised me not to. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe strongly advised is not the, the the right term, but you you suggested not to use MFCCs. Or you, yeah, you, yeah. You were kind of like against the idea of using yeah, them because yeah. they're, they're not really a, a kind of comprehensible, yeah. humanly comprehensible. Yeah, they they are kind of gibberishy numbers, but mm. to the to the computer they they're quite yeah. meaningful because they can differentiate a lot. I've 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 was using them a bit, but I've kind of wrapped around because I think for a certain noisy material, it's my understanding that they don't fare well for um, capturing some of the difference in different noisy materials, just because of how oh, okay. how it does what it is that it does mathematically. Oh, but um, okay. but yeah, so I'm I'm still and and for some of the processes that I do, I still n like. I mean, need is maybe the right word there, but like I, I do use like the fact that I still have the loudness because I can actually pull that number out and then yeah. do something with it. Yeah. Um, Whereas if it just becomes like this big descriptor wad of soup, where it's just like two hundred numbers that have literally no meaning, mm -hmm. that's great for the machine like machine learning type matching, but mm -hmm. it's completely decorrelated from any perceptual thing, which sure, yeah. may yeah. or may not be useful depending on what I mean, you're doing. Do 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 you um or restrict the descriptors that are used in your matching ever? Do you say say you've got these four, but would you, would you ever sort of like oh not, yeah, yeah not use the loudness like yeah, turn, yeah, yeah, turn yeah. the loudness off? Yeah yeah like I I in the See his combine or whatever, like I that's built into it. So like you have the four descriptors and you can adjust the weights, mm. but then you can also oh, turn right. them off completely. Okay. Which gets really interesting because if you turn off, for example, pitch mm. and you give it pitched material, 
you get things that match on other descriptors, but the pitch is yeah. now yeah. random, essentially. Yeah, you yeah. know, and, and you do this for any of the descriptors. Mm -hmm. So that, that can be actually quite musically interesting. Yeah, um, there's still areas that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at where this, that I've kind of really, I suppose, just scratch the, still scratching the surface. Mm. It's a huge area, isn't it? I suppose, oh, yeah. For this, I'm using MFCC. Really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, primarily. Uh, I mean, for this, I can see that being quite useful for because you get a really broad range of yeah. sound and timbres from the, the mixer, so mm. it, it can probably be quite interesting at discovering. Yeah, I mean, Centro is surprisingly mm. uh, quite accurate in, yeah, yeah. In, in matching, I think, from what I've seen. It's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I used to think Centro would be kind of not, you know, be not quite as useful as some of the more distinctly tonal measures like MFCC. And, yeah. yeah. And, other um, frequency coefficients and things. Mm -hmm. but, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's super crude, much, but it, yeah, it works. Because it's, it's also susceptible to weird things. So for example, like a, a, like a very scooped mm. thing would have a very, the same uh, centroid as it's inverse because it, it's okay. the middle right. of the weight. But like we, we happen to have very few sounds that kind of yeah. do that to that extreme where the centroid would be the same. So mm -hmm. even though it's susceptible to certain sort of frequency fudgings, Typically for acoustic or, or sample based things, it, it really strongly correlates with like brightness as a, like a perceptual thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I find it, I mean, it's still like one of the core ones I quite like, but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. still sort of torn in terms of like the old school, like perceptual descriptors versus new school, like sort of statistical soup. Yeah. So is, is, is Fluke almost have more geared towards the latter there? You have both. You have all of them. Yeah, it's just right. largely like... The way that I guess my again my understanding of like a lot of the machine learning stuff it, it benefits from like it making sense of the numbers and yeah, not you because yeah, sure. you could be like I think loudness and pitch are important here mm. and then it turns out like the, your loudness is all within this range yeah but your your MFCCs or or the, your second derivative of of spectral something or other is like super mm. descriptive and the algorithm will just do that instead so like mm. there's certain things that we think will be useful but aren't mathematically. Um, yeah, I suppose if if the processing power exists, is ideal to do them all, and then yeah, yeah. I mean that, that's that's a, a common one. I mean yeah. even even in terms of big data, like this is tiny, like like a couple yeah. hundred dimensions is like nothing for like mm -hmm. in terms of like you know what big data stuff does. Yeah, yeah. I mean so, we're talking like real time capabilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And even that, like yeah, like hundreds of descriptors, like as long as you have like a like you prefit a tree and all this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. it, it can it goes quite fast. Like I, I've yeah. It's for certain things, other like brute force can be faster, but like for that high dimensions, mm -hmm. that stuff works pretty well. Yeah, it's um, so it's certainly sort of more, more of a feasible area to, to have mm. that, that extent of um, computation going on. Now, yeah. I, suppose, I, th I think that the, 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 the most load intensive thing that I've got going on here is actually the pitch tracking on the input, which <laughs> <laughs> is uh, annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. Well, shall we, shall we play some Yeah.